Every time a Navy pilot mans his or her aircraft on an aircraft carrier, gets ready to take off, and carries out a mission, their lives are in danger. What do the words, let's bingo, mean when a Navy pilot returns to the flight deck in the middle of the sea, and why do Navy pilots use that term? Basically, let's bingo is a command used by Navy pilots in a state of emergency to hurriedly begin their return to base flights. Bingo is a term used to describe a fuel level at which the plane should abort its training or combat mission and either begin its return flight to base or prepare for aerial refueling. Officially, the United States Navy defines bingo as an order to proceed and land at the field specified, utilizing a bingo profile. Aircraft are considered to be in an emergency fuel critical situation. Bearing, distance and destination shall be provided. On the low fuel warning indicator that is shaped like a bingo card in the cockpit of an aircraft, it is stated that bingo is a code that implies the mission must be immediately aborted and the aircraft must return to base as a result of a lack of fuel. A complex yet crucial aspect of training to be a Navy pilot is efficient fuel management. Pilots are trained to always assign a portion of their plane's fuel for unplanned scenarios. They also have to manage their aircraft's fuel in such a way that they can return to an aircraft carrier that has moved a couple of miles away from its initial position at takeoff. Although the U.S. Navy can provide its pilots with airborne tankers when needed, it is still considered bad piloting for a fighter pilot to exhaust his or her plane's fuel to the point where an aerial tanker is needed to land at the nearest possible airfield. There might even be a circumstance where an aerial tanker might not be able to successfully refuel an aircraft, which is why pilots are advised to always have a reasonable portion of fuel left in their tanks. Fuel levels are usually monitored during flights concerning the real-time distance from a plane to the nearest landing airfield. With these ever-changing factors, a base level to go home is constantly adjusted to accommodate these changes. At this point, the aircraft possesses the exact amount of fuel that will enable him to return to its present landing base using a regular return to base profile and land on the deck having an acceptable remainder of fuel. This minimum limit of fuel is mandated and regulated by the FAA and individual service guidance. Often, this minimum limit takes into consideration weather conditions at the preferred landing spot and a second choice airfield. This base fuel level is known as Joker Fuel. Joker Fuel is a safe spot that notifies pilots to begin their return flights to their aircraft carriers. It's not so worrisome. Under the close supervision of the pilots, they know that the present fuel level can get them back to the flight deck with an extra in case of an unprecedented occurrence such as air traffic controllers traffic holdups or a temporary shutdown of the runway. Joker level represents an amount of fuel that allow pilots to return to the base under normal circumstances. However, let us assume that pilots are flying under the same circumstances, but have forgotten to monitor the fuel levels that are way past the safe joker point. Eventually, a pilot will pick up on that fact and begin making some calculations on the burn rate of their fuels to the distance to be covered to return to the aircraft carrier. If the results of these calculations prove to be unfavorable, the pilot announces that the aircraft is at bingo fuel. The bingo state indicates that there has been an error somewhere and the pilot needs to immediately use an emergency flight profile to land at the nearest possible airfield. Following this state of emergency, the bingo plane will change its direction to the nearest base. Then its pilot will relay the transponder code 7700 and begin an ascent. To make this ascent, the pilot must use the bingo card on the cockpit to access which flight profile is most suitable concerning the distance to the landing airfield and wind conditions. They will use the bingo card to determine the most fuel-efficient flight profile. The profile will include the exact altitude they must ascend to and the right spot to begin to land. The pilot must report to air traffic controllers to inform them about the state of emergency. The air traffic controllers will then give the pilot a prioritized pass to follow the bingo recommended profile and tackle any obstacles pilots might face while trying to land the aircraft. Next, the pilot has to face the dangerous procedure of landing the aircraft on the flight deck. It is difficult enough to do so on a land airfield. It is much more difficult to carry out in a limited space on a floating airfield. 
To safely touch down on an aircraft carrier, the pilot has to make sure that the aircraft aligns correctly with the airfield on the deck, enter it at the right angle, and halt the aircraft at some distance. Once this is done and the pilot exits the plane, the aircraft maintenance crew on the carrier must tend to the aircraft to make sure it's safe for another flight. Most importantly, these flight deck crew members must refuel the aircraft, seeing as it was previously at bingo fuel. Recently, the Navy is experiencing a decline in its number of fighter pilots. This shortage stems from technical and safety issues pilots face while manning the aircraft. These problems range from difficulties in preparing the aircraft and their engines to inconsistencies in the flow of oxygen to pilots, which can damage them physiologically. Combating these problems has increased the time it takes to produce a Navy pilot from three years to four years, which results in the shortage the Navy is facing with the number of its fighter pilots. Becoming a U.S. Navy pilot is no easy feat. For starters, you have to be at least 18 years old before enlisting in the Navy. After that, you must be promoted to an officer before clocking 28 years of age. One also has to be physically, educationally, and medically sound before being considered to become a pilot. Prospects must complete several training sessions. In addition to having a bachelor's degree, potential pilots must be able to withstand the physical demands that come with the position, and they must be cleared medically. The physical test consists of a combination of push-ups, sit-ups, a 2.4-kilometer race, and riding a fixed bicycle for 12 minutes non-stop. Then you must pass a standard medical screening test that ensures you are qualified with the minimum acceptable health conditions. Basic vitals are checked and your body is thoroughly assessed to discover any risky traits you might possess. Everything from body fat to the quality of your vision is checked. After completing the physical, medical and educational checks, you must then prepare to pass what is known as the Aviation Selection Test Battery. Then you must enroll in flight school and earn wings over the course of your career. Pilots are trained to be combat ready for war. Their list of possible missions include search and rescue, conducting surveillance and carrying out at sea replenishment. The nature of their duties requires pilots to go through training at regular intervals. During the course of a pilot service, he or she must be frequently trained on the aircraft they man. After all, these planes, pilots are offering both offense and defense support for the U.S. Navy. Now you know the reason behind pilots saying let's bingo during their return flights to aircraft carriers. What do you think about the let's bingo code? Drop any other slang in the Navy you know of in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.